What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be drawing floor plans for you live. Well, one floor plan. So this is part three of my series where I will be drawing a um, group of vacation cabins for a potential parcel. So me and some friends have always dreamed of this idea, like let's get five, originally I said five to 50 acres, you know, but we're probably looking somewhere 10 to 20. Let's, let's get 10 to 20 acres and build a bunch of cabins on there, make them vacation rentals, places we would want to stay over the holidays and stuff. So, um, now I'm just having some fun drawing these floor plans and figuring out if this is even practical, what these would look like, and then making a site with them. So I'll be drawing the floor plan and then we're going to go into SketchUp and model it in 3D. And then um, if I have time, I'll throw up the rendering in Enscape and we can see how it looks from a final perspective along with the other cabins that I've worked on up to this point. Um, so my goal is to do all of this in 60 minutes for you here live. I will share all my screens and we'll get rolling. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the process schematic. So I'm going to start with room blocking as always, and then work on some of the exterior concepts and then build that 3d model. Um, as a reminder, here is, this is a mid journey image. I was just trying to get some, some visuals to help, help stimulate the creativity and, and, um, help people that wanted to see this, uh, to be able to see what I'm thinking in my head while, while we're working. So, um, yeah, worked with mid journey for a while and spat that out. Um, and then site parameters again. So we would probably have a PUD, um, which just in general means I'll have a lot of flexibility for lots and sizing. I can put the units wherever I want is my goal. Um, again, we're thinking large acreage site, and then I want five to 10 different cabin plans so that we can have a variety of offering for people that want to come and stay with their families and retreats and, and things like that. The design program, really similar to yesterday, um, but I'm going to make a different structure. So yesterday, the last two days, I worked on a really similar structure. Like I had a, a simple form, one bedroom and a bunk room for day one. And then day two, that same simple form, but bumped out the side a, sec a, a little bit to get a second full on bedroom and a second bath. Um, and then change the elevation some so it looked like a, a completely separate unit. Well, day three now, I'm gonna start from scratch again um, and build a cabin up from there. Um, I saw some inspiration images. I think I might do something a little bit more mid-century styling on this and hopefully they'll blend together well um, as I put them together on the site. So let's get into the CAD. The fun part, um, as I was discussing, so these are, oh wait, before the CAD, we gotta show the keyboard. Um, as I was discussing, these are the plans from day one and two. So this is day one, really simple structure, um, thinking uh, circular concrete piers for the foundation and then just run six by six or eight by eights up. Um, and then we have two rows of those on the outside here. And then you can do 20, 24 inch floor trusses across the bottom here. Um, yeah, this could be a slab on grade as well. You know, the construction method, I'm not getting too caught up on yet. I want to get the plans out in the universe and we can edit the construction methods as we go. This was day two. So you can see here, this structure really kept similar, but we added this wing here for that additional bedroom. So day three, I like to start. If you've been watching every day, you'll notice I usually start with the exterior. I don't start with the exterior in a hundred percent of my plans, but a lot of them because I just, I know and I have an idea for the footprint. So that's usually where I start. Um, I, the beginning point is often my most concrete idea. Um, so sometimes it's the kitchen that I'm starting with. Sometimes it's, I have a 40 foot wide site and the home needs to be 40 feet. So I'll just draw the lines at 40 feet and, um, see what I can fit in there. But today I actually want to start with the exterior 
because this was my idea. So I'm gonna copy over this Eve line here from our old one. We're just gonna keep um, 10 foot plate on all these. And I'm gonna come up a 412. So up four inches over 12. And then I was showing six inch overhangs. I might play with the overhangs some. I was showing six inch overhangs on all the other ones, the other two, all the other two. Um, so I might stick with that. I do really like big overhangs though. We have really giant overhangs on my house now, my personal home. Um, I didn't design it, but yeah, that's um, my personal home now. And it's really nice to have the big overhangs because you never really have to deal with rain. Um, there's really very little water that ever hits my siding, which is super nice. Okay, so this is kind of what I'm thinking for the form. And then maybe even like this area here, there's like a post or something on the end. And this is almost like a slanted pergola area for this kitchen space. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, let's draw it. Um, and you can see here, I'll probably do big window set like that on this face. I am trying to divide that line into three and not, there we go, oh goodness. So big window set like that and then the deck from our old one so we can see it comes up yay high so deck off to the side all right so deck area here with kitchen behind and then this will be like a great room with dining behind so let's try that i'm just showing kitchen cabinetry now and hopefully an island someday. All right, eight foot island. Let's go four feet deep. I think deep island is probably one of the most common things I'm showing in plans lately. Oh, this kitchen is gonna be awesome. Okay, nice big kitchen. I'm gonna keep all that open. Let's grab some furniture so we can start to visualize. So this being 16 feet wide, it's 15 in inside. I'm showing two by six walls. I might wanna think about some efficiency measures down the road. I don't know, I haven't gotten super far on that yet, but um, so 15 feet wide is adequate if we're thinking a pretty small cabin here. I'm guessing the door to the outside will be right here. Although I could turn the corner with that, couldn't I? Maybe that come out of the kitchen instead. Hmm. So door. And that's gonna come off a couple feet in the front. I want that front area to be our big window set. Door there instead. Does that feel better or worse? Let's see here, this could be range wall or that could be sink wall. But if this is sink wall, then range is over here. Range and fridge go over here. I'm just drawing lines for appropriate sized items. So two feet on either side of the range. Hmm. Going back here now, I'm thinking the door will probably be better off on this great room side. Okay. 
the cabin tree will probably be pulled back anyway, because then we can do range here, sink here, and then fridge here, or vice versa. Actually, yeah, probably range here. And then sink here with the giant windows on the back. Yep. All right, I'm liking it. We're going to keep going. This half, I think, can be vaulted as well. Let's grab some text so we can see that. Living. And this will be a vault. And then we got dining. And we got kitchen. Okay. Now, how are we going to get in here? I had the thought, like, does this then become the entryway? Is this the primary suite area? You know, is the front porch off of this side? Is this more of a private porch? Maybe? Let's see. Okay, front porch coming off six feet. So that's eight by six. That's pretty good size. You can even fit a couple small chairs out there if you're wanting to. Um, but it's also not the biggest porch in the world. Okay, so this is entryway. Let's just imagine this is our main hallway then. Sometimes you're doing AutoCAD Live and the buttons don't want to click the way. I got a new processor, by the way, for the computer. It's kind of exciting for me. A little bit of a tech nerd at times. So saw one yesterday on Best Buy at Best Buy. This is on pretty good sale. So it is the Ryzen 5600X for those of you that care. Okay, so right now our footprint, that is 54 feet back. So we're looking at 12 plus 28 by 60. I think where we're at, let's measure this square footage. Let me clean up these lines first. And we'll measure the square footage. I just always want to be mindful of it. Square footage measuring commence 1395. Oh, so we're not even the biggest of these versions because this was 1464. Hmm. Maybe we can make this a couple feet wider then. What does that do to our elevation? Probably fine. Just want to see proportionally feels yeah that could still be cool Okay. Oh, I deleted my polyline though. That was dumb. I think I could even cantilever this side out a couple feet. You know, have a little section like that. Let's cantilever it out from our foundation there.
And that would help with our primary suite as well. Still probably considerably smaller though than back 20 feet. It's probably considerably smaller. Maybe not considerably, but it's probably still smaller than our plan yesterday, which I didn't really want to be smaller than yesterday. Because I want to show a primary suite for this one. this flush of that corner wall I just like cleaning stuff like that up I feel like it just ends up being a better floor plan if you do otherwise you just kind of get some janky areas all right let's see here if I got enough room to do two baths back here if this all needs to be deeper I also need laundry and mechanicals. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need some more space here. Although that dining area is now huge. Let's take a different table. Let's get our big sectional, our big table. Yeah, check that out. A lot of space in there. You could do a bench seat on one side of the foyer here. It's probably all open actually, all the way to here. Maybe this comes out four feet with like slat wall or half wall screen wall you know little two by twos in there okay that was our front door sorry got distracted there for a second sometimes when you're live streaming you get distracted Okay, so let's come out, let's go back to our bath. Bathroom area, back here, working on this. So this would be the auxiliary or hall bath area. I'm showing five by 10 right now. Let's do five by nine, because I got an idea. Because now we can do, I am going to need some more depth though. Because this can be bath. That's your hall bath. This can be your primary bed. This can be bed two. And this can be a walk-in. And this can be primary bath. But I have no space for laundry or mechanicals here. I mean, I do have a lot of space here. 39, three by 17. That's cool, but I don't see a good way to chop that up. Provide some space for mechanicals. Let's do a bench. Built in bench or something there. Or that could be closet. For this bed. 13, 2 by 13, 5. Yeah, so this bed is big enough where I could put a closet in one corner, a reach in closet. And then our primary bed is 
13, 8 by 11, 8. What are we at square footage wise? We are 1539. All right, let's try something else here. Let's try a smaller kitchen. The kitchen's still pretty big. 11, nine by 15, eight, 12 by 16. And then bring all this over. that vault. Maybe delete that door. <laughs> door. That's a wall. Follow along with the stream and you can learn the difference between doors and walls. Just like me. Okay. Because I've been liking the bunk room from the last couple plans. So maybe this could be bunk room. With closet there. 13, two by 12, eight, it's the size of that bedroom. We go 13 by 11. Enter the bunk room from the hall. Ooh, and then put mechanicals here. Issues that's not quite deep enough. What if this all goes up this way? A foot. Still works. Okay. Mechanicals there. Bath at the end of the hallway. This primary 13.8 by 15.8. For this size, it doesn't need to be quite that big. 13.8 by 14.8, I still feel like I could go eight and a half inches. We do need laundry as well. What if this is two separate closets? Like your mechanical closet and a stackable. Big enough for a bunk room? Five foot seven. No, it's not. How big would you need? Let's get a couple icons here. For a laundry combo furnace room instead. Do a stackable right in here. Oh yeah. This is a big furnace. I doubt you would need this big of a furnace here. What do we need for a bunk room? Let's get our twin bed. Actually, let's copy all these down. Hmm, okay. A little shy on space there. There's gotta be a way to do it though. Let's chew on this. You could enter the bunk room from the other side. Turn this. And then go back four feet deep. Give your field crew plenty of space to work in that mechanical closet. Okay. And then, yeah, this could be bunk room or office. You had like a workcation kind of place going on. Can even recess that a little bit. So 
so that didn't feel right off that foyer space because we could naturally change the vault there. And then here, I know a plan this size, you don't really want to throw away square footage, but I think this would really help and add some fun interest to the plan. Because then we could do built-ins on this back side here. Maybe that's like office storage stuff. Maybe that's just a built-in cabinet for you to put your luggage in while you're staying there. You know, who knows? Oh, and a door. And then with this being so close to the foyer, I do like the idea of changing the ceiling here. I mean, I could flip that, I guess. Just do a shorter bench. Flip this whole thing in the room. What do you think? I'm gonna try it. Okay. bench could be in it even bigger then mm, yeah I like that all right wasn't necessarily shooting for a three bedroom here but I do have to say this works out a lot nicer. And then we're still at 1559. So still we are at 1559. This bed ends up being 13.2 by 11.0. This bed is still 13.8 by 14. So, I mean, this is our king bed here. All right, we're this primary bath. How wide is it? Five foot eight and a half. I think that goes just four inches deeper. So that can be my six foot vanity. Grab a toilet. Draw some sinks. And then you'd have center this on this wall. We'll do like a nice long high off the floor window there. Walk in for your primary suites off that hallway. Let's draw this secondary bath. One thing I like, one unintended side effect of adjusting all these rooms around was I added a lot of depth to our hall bath here. there with the toilet all right I'm feeling like this is pretty close to start modeling should I show the kitchen you want to see the kitchen um, these being vacation homes I'm leaning toward this is probably more windows than I would show in a standard residential home um, I mean I'll draw whatever you want if you're my client I'm not saying that but um, like I would opt for more natural light less storage in a kitchen like this um, 
because yeah being a vacation home I think that's what people are wanting hmm yeah I think fridge works there I'd probably sh still show that recessed area just bring all that back six this over six and this out six and then I'm gonna, just going to frame a dummy wall behind that fridge Show your fridge pushed back. Everything's still centered in that space. We probably have another couple windows here. And then your big window set off the front here. Maybe means the fireplace goes on this wall. Been shown electric fireplaces and all of these. Big window set up front, porch, porch. Okay, cool. Let's switch over to SketchUp, shan't we? And a coffee break. Thoughts on the floor plan? liking it so far but we need to see what this thing looks like in 3d before we can really say for certain I just opened the wrong file so this is gonna take another minute um, not literally a minute but you know what I mean I got new versions of all the software I should install these while I'm not live Okay, opening my Verbo property, and let's share that screen with you. Hey, Adam here. Cool. Back to SketchUp. Okay, this is what we've got so far. So these two on the left are cabin one. We're calling the Kestrel, and then this is cabin two, the Peregrine. I'm naming all these after Birds of Prey, because... For those that know me, I really love birds of prey. Like, I will almost get in an accident every time I see one on the highway. I'm like, oh, hawk. My wife very graciously um, plays along. Um, but then also tells me, like, hey, let's not die over watching a hawk. But birds of prey are cool. Wow. Um, birds of prey tangent. Okay. So we are going to model unit three, what I was just drawing. Um, these are all groups so that I can easily plop and place them. This is a placeholder. That's probably where I'll put um, cabin three, where that was. And then I'm looking, looking like I need to start making my footprint a little bigger. But let's come over here and start our new group. Just opening back up to AutoCAD real quick. 12 by 15. What was that bump out? And this was 18 feet wide. 18 feet, correct? Yep. 18 feet wide and then deep, 54 feet deep. Nope. And then this was, this came in 17, six and six, four. Okay, and then we also need to get that cantilevered bump out for our primary bed. Two feet by 17. 17, oh. One, seven feet, there we go. Line's gotta be straight. This is a mess if it's not. Okay, um, and then I like having an old cabin nearby because then it's easy to like push pull levels and stuff. I don't even need to really do anything here. See that? Okay, then I'm gonna split this up into two sections.
that under area I will delete because I'm showing all these raised off the ground, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, and then I think in AutoCAD we had a 412. Oops. 412. So I'm just going to use that line to snap the vertical, get our pitch in here, and push pull that back. Delete some of the extra lines it made that I don't need. Then I'm going to come in here, offset that face six inches on the interior. Because I'm really only looking for that top of line. All this will be pushed back into the face. Draw in a couple lines to make that happen, and this will be pushed back. Oh, sometimes it deletes your faces when I don't want it to. Now I want it to delete. Okay. That's one section. And then this section. Doing the same process. 412 coming back this way. Wait, and then extrude that back. Extrude. Extrude is not the command. <laughs> looking for. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Um, I'm going to come down 8 inches for that, and then this will be 6 as well. So I'm going to finish this face off so that I can push-pull this as well. Push-pull is the command you're looking for. If you're following along and want to do this in SketchUp yourself. Okay, and then I'm going to down flush with that and this comes out six sweet yeah so that'll just carry the, the roof line down our cantilevered section there and I'm gonna do the same thing here offset that face six inches to get our Eve our fascia and then push all that back to the house Sometimes when you push a plane into another plane, it deletes everything. Oh yeah, I think this could look cool together. So this comes off two feet to the front. Okay, and then that comes up 12 inches. I'm showing at two by tens, two by twelves. Um, you probably can accomplish both in that, like that size span. Um, either way, I think you'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to show this pergola a foot down. So I want to have it be the same. And we'll just show like two by eights. Okay, I'm drawing a, another 2x8 header 
bring in here. And then we can copy our corner posts. Actually, I want to copy this one. And copy that corner post and the spindles. They're not really spindles though. I do want them sitting under that two by eight. No, these little screen walls. I'm, I've just been playing with these all. Um, in all these versions, really, I'm just having fun with them. I kind of like it. Is that okay? Um, one time I was asked in a um, HOA architectural review meeting with in front of a board from the architect, and he asked me what was the design intent for X, Y, or Z. I told him, I'm like, I just kind of liked it. <laughs> he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's not a group. So, uh, which was not the answer he was looking for. If you're wondering. <laughs> um, okay, I do want to do some wood siding or accents on this one too to make it match the others. But I'm liking that porch so far. And then let's copy our posts. Actually, let's copy a whole row of posts, right? Instead of just one post. What are you thinking here, guy? Okay, so that for this one, I imagine they'll be center bearing. Um, coming down that section and then bearing through there. Um, and then I want to also have a corner post supporting this deck. That will be match the height of these. I'll come back later and make that shorter if needed. Um, this post though, match the back of the house, and another row of posts on that end of the house. Cabin, should I say house or cabin? I guess it is technically a house. Okay. Oh, and then we got our porch. Where was our porch at? Jump it back over to AutoCAD, check out the porch. 25.5 back, six foot out. 25 feet five, and then it was eight feet wide. There we go. This is like a 90s commercial toy gun noise. Oh, not anymore. It went away. But you know what I mean? Felt like that for a while in there. Okay, let's do the same thing with our roof where I just wanna copy this pitch down if it'll work. Oh wait, wrong way. Whoop. That goes down. Oh, 
offset six. Get our eve line. There we go. Took me a second. Okay, and this is gonna come out six. And match on this back side. Also come out six. That space isn't gonna be there, but this is. Just easier to frame if it's not vaulted. It gives you a little more wiggle room, you know? I mean, one of the considerations I continue to make with these is like, I want them to be affordable to build. So I'm, I'm really searching for some bang for the buck options here. Um, granted, like that wood siding is not gonna be cheap. Um, like I get it, there's some concessions I'm making. Um, but in areas that I think won't be high, high focal, high demand areas, I'd like to make those concessions um, so that I, we can spend money on the stuff that we feel like it's going to be really, really cool. Um, let's just color this whole thing black so I can get all the soffit eaves, fascia, everything like that one and then I'll come back in color the siding I want wood oh, maybe that bump out's in black that would be cool do this like in a I'm gonna change everything in the drawing if I do this editing something else no I'm not that bump out there, that black siding, the primary bedroom. Okay, now let's draw our window set on the front of the main living area. Let's copy these over. I'm liking the size window. Can I fit a triple in there? I can. Let's go slightly shorter with it. Narrower, I mean. Making each of these one foot narrower. The downside with using a model that already has buildings on it is you need to be careful with like your components and things. Um, because your components can get really tricky on you really quickly if it's the same component reference in a bunch of different drawing sets. Okay, so that's gonna come up another foot is the bottom of the floor. Do you want that six inches off? So windows is one area where I'm like, yeah, I think it's okay if we splurge on stuff like this, like windows and siding to get the property to really look like what we want it to look like. I think are good areas to splurge on. But then like the structure and the front porch design and you know, some stuff like that that isn't gonna be thought about as much. I don't think we need to splurge. My two cents. If you're building on a budget, which everybody is, everybody is, um, we need to make concessions all the time. And I try and embed a lot of those in early so that you're not freaking out when you get numbers back. Okay. So let's see here. Let's make this window unique. Actually, I'm gonna move this whole face out so I can see it a little better. I can select them all. No, you know what? We'll just do this. Okay. Then I want this top line. Copy this line. Copy that over. Oops. What happened there? What did I do wrong? A 
Why did you freak out on me? Sketch up. Let's just draw it in by hand then. These faces aren't completing, and so it's like giving me a bunch of grief. There we go. All right, I can't make that one unique because I already did. So I'm gonna actually bring this window lush and then just grab this corner is all I wanna move. And I'm gonna move it up and then come back in and offset it to recolor that window frame. And then by pushing and pulling that back, it had the glass in the inside, which I don't want because that'll look weird with the reflections and stuff. So now I have a window that matches our roof line. And then we're gonna come back in and edit both of these, make this one unique. And then just select all the top half of that window, move it up. And make this one unique. Do the same thing. That's slightly taller. Kind of reluctant to draw a ton of trim details in black just because it doesn't it's so hard to see when you get shadows and everything all working working against you okay starting to feel like a cabin um i wanted to do windows and a door on this side didn't i that door We'll get that window. So we don't need massive doors and windows there. It'll help with like furniture and things when you're trying to decorate that space. Got really <laughs> relaxed in my chair there for a second. It's like way back. Like, what am I doing back there? Cool, cool, cool. Door. And then a couple windows. Oops, I didn't go completely vertical. That didn't snap. That blue is hard to see. So I imagine it's super hard to see for you. Um, because the resolution on these streams isn't the same as what I'm looking at. Okay, maybe we do need to sneak a bigger window in that kitchen area. It's gonna look weird with that one there. By the fridge, if you recall. There we go. And then I'll show our big kitchen window. I'm gonna probably model this from this side. So we can show our big kitchen window over here. And then I'm gonna make these unique again. What size is this? Three feet by one foot six. So I wanna come out another 18 inches with it and another one foot taller. Four feet has been my longtime standard for height of 
whoa there we go. Oof. Um, height of kitchen window um, because if you set it at eight foot header which is nice because then it matches like your eight foot patio door and stuff um, if you set it at an eight foot header then it leaves you about eight or nine inches from the bottom of the window to that countertop uh, which is enough to get an outlet in or do some sort of backsplash. Actually, let's copy these over first. Probably have a couple in that primary bed. Okay, now let's throw this on our site. We're gonna make this a group. Move it around. I'm gonna transform this and go mirrored with it. Go negative one. Just transform negative one and mirrors it. it maybe a little okay and then let's show like a little parking area for it back here actually it'd probably be over here even though we won't really see this from the render but I want to build a more accurate site so not like more accurate you know what I mean I want to build a site that feels on the accurate side so that when I um, model everything it starts to feel right you know for future oh, I didn't connect that line that gravel the underside gravel too the grass being real grass if you don't do the underside it'll actually poke through the top which is super funky but that's what happens SketchUp really isn't great with like the front side and back side of layers we got some trees to move to they're in our driveway then I want to surround our new cabin with some trees and make it feel like it's part of the family. And then we'll need a couple bushes in the front there. You know what? I forgot to do the decking on this. Gonna grab that as well. Oh, <laughs> because it's at an angle now. The decking is at an angle. Okay, that's gonna take me forever to fix, so I'm just gonna show it like that. Ooh, hey. <laughs> Got it fi fixed magically. Fixed. Alrighty. What is that? two spaces There's no surface there there we go now there's a surface there now I can paint black sweet all right let's add some dune grass and then get to the render and then get on with our days I know this is work but this is like on work I have like pay the bills work work you know the difference you get it okay there's our site so far uh, should they get a car they should probably get a car 
We're gonna show this place is packed to increase demand. So we're gonna get a cool, cool car out there. All right. Enscape loading. And once it does, we will swap screens out. How's everybody doing? Oh, just past an hour. I guess in the intro, I got a couple minutes. It's probably an hour and two minutes, I would say. But we're getting there. I think this might be my favorite plan too, which is fun. Okay, let's share our screen. I don't know why I'm saying let's. Let me share my screen. I'm gonna share the rendering window now. And here we go. Here we go. All right, we got this one off to our left. Thinking this one is the Osprey, the new name. Kitchen windows, move the sun around. Oop, I'm noticing I missed some fascia there. Coloring in that fascia. Bottom side of the kitchen. There we go. Ooh, sunset. So that's your eating porch. Cool view out to the front, wherever it is. This one's the Kestrel. And then we have, what did I call this one? The Peregrine, yeah. There we go. I'm showing a couple more. Sweet. Digging it so far. Let's show a sky. Aerial view of the site. Ooh, let's color this in with shingles. Cause that's looking funky. The back side of the peregrine doesn't have shingles on it. Okay, there we go. Probably show the siding all the way around too. Okay, got it. That's our site so far. Loving it. Okay, cool. Thank you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with more fun designs. Um, drop something in the comments if you wanna see your uh, an idea you have drawn up. And I'm gonna finish this cup of coffee. And you're gonna have an awesome day, you, right there. And I'll talk to you soon, bye.